take a girl and a guy, and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Please check us out online on our Facebook page and Instagram at Couples Synergy or our website, couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for nearly 20 years. You know, everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of. With the partner they fell in love with. Uh, Gene, on today's episode, we're going to be talking about pain. Yep. And specifically, emotional pain Mm -hmm. and how emotional pain affects relationships and, you know, kind of plays out between a couple. But before we do that, just want to read off uh, a review that we got. And um, I love love reading the reviews. Yeah, that's right. It's a lot of fun, right? It gives us the feedback. Some feedback, yeah. (laughs) Uh, cause we're, you know, down here in our basement, uh, recording this in our little recording studio and, um, we don't really get to hear what people are thinking out there. So this is from Kay Lunia and uh, I don't know, she, he <laughs> says, must listen, great information provided for everyone. It's a must listen and amazing host. Thank you That's so much, great. Kay Lunia. Thank you. And, you know, just just as a reminder out there, if you would like to hear a topic or get more information about a specific topic about relationships, just email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. And also, if you want to be a guest or be considered uh, to be a guest on the podcast, email us as well, contact at couplesynergy.com. We'd love to... Here's some stories out there about couples and their relationships. You know, we also have some other exciting things happening. We have a, an online Facebook group, Couple Synergy Community, which you can join and interact with us that way as well. And then we have a online community called Connections that you can get to either through that Facebook page or our website, couplesynergy.com. And Connections is a library of webinars that we've taught and articles that we've written. And every Tuesday night, we go live through that Connections and talk about a topic. And this is a free online resource community. So um, just go on there and and register for it, and you'll be able to access our free weekly webinar. And um, join us. We'd love to see you. And you'll also get information on uh, workshops that we're teaching. So we start offering workshops that are virtual. We are still planning on the Couples Weekend Intensive, which is going to be in April, April 15th through the 18th. Mm -hmm. Um, That is going to be in Michigan. And, um, you know, if you out there would like some personal coaching in your relationship, Couple to Couple is the program for you. So whether you're working with us or our other Couple Synergy Associates, uh, we'd be more than happy to help you out. So let's get to talking about pain. Pain. So, you know, pain, when we talk about physical pain, our body has kind of a way of dealing with physical pain. You know, first off, it's really all about the brain. Yep. Right? And when we have something happen to our body, um, our body sends signals to our brain, and the brain interprets it as physical pain. It's telling you to get away from whatever is causing you that pain, to move away from it. Emotional pain works a little differently. Well, your body responds the same. You, your body does respond right. the same. Right? Only there's no thing to move away from because your physical life is not in danger, so it's much more difficult to resolve emotional pain. 
Right. You think about, you know, being heartbroken. You, you know, you feel that pain in your chest. You feel the pain in your stomach. You know, you actually are going to have this physical pain manifest itself, but your brain is interpreting it as physical pain, but it is a deep emotional wound that is being caused. One of my clients was going through a breakup and she had heard that taking like a acetaminophen. So that's... Um, Brand name is like Tylenol, but acetaminophen is the generic or the term. Uh, or the other one. Or you're talking about like um, ibuprofen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anything. Okay. And it helped relieve some of her emotional pain because it dulled some of her physical physical pain sensors. Mm-hmm. So there really is a connection, and you know, you know this if you've been somewhere and you get hurt, but you have a lot of support, you get through it better than if you're all alone and vice versa. So when we're stuck in emotional pain, we really get trapped there unless we can go and talk it out with someone. Or if we're really, really good, we can practice distracting ourselves through meditation, mindfulness, exercise, other things. But it really is a whole chemistry thing going on in your body that is not like muscling through it is very difficult. Yeah, you know, you're talking about distraction. We know that that works with physical pain. Like if you hurt yourself or bump your knee, if you rub that spot, you are actually, you know, kind of dulling the the pain, uh, the pain receptors. Well, physical touch is going to release endorphins, right? Right. You, so you are sending you multiple better. signals to your brain. Mm-hmm. You know, not just the pain signals are being sent to your brain, but now you know, the sensation that you are touching the area there. And so it it kind of lessens the amount of physical pain that you feel. Uh, We also know that, you know, if you look at, like if you're getting a a, a needle stick, you know, for, you know, getting a shot or something, if you look at it, it is actually going to be more painful if you're not watching it happen because you are actually sending more information to your brain to register it as pain. So when you apply that to emotional pain, we know that distracting yourself, doing something else, some type of other activity will decrease that amount of emotional pain that you're feeling. If you just sit in it and just kind of wallow in it, it is going to be much more painful than if you meditate or if you go for a walk and do something physical. If you're in emotional pain, you're actually creating a feedback loop inside of yourself. So you feel crappy, which tells your brain that you feel crappy. So then you have crappy thoughts, and those crappy thoughts send out some crappy chemicals that make you feel worse. And so you're feeling bad, and then you're thinking bad, and your thinking bad is making you feel bad. Right. So you're in this thing, and that's why you want to disrupt that feedback system that naturally kind of gets created because your body is trying to feel better. And it's looking for a way out, but because it's emotional in nature and not a physical threat to your life, it's really difficult to to know what to do during that situation. And so, you know, I see this with my clients that, you know, I'm talking to them and they've maybe had something happen a day, two, five days ago that they've just been stuck in. Oh, there are clients that have had that sin in it for years. Right. But once they come in and you talk to them, Mm -hmm. they can shift it. Because what they're doing, they're having an experience and they can only apply what they already know to that experience. And so they need, you know, we call this like reframing or certain other things. And it's always amazing because whenever we get hurt, whether it's emotional or whether it's physical, it directly impacts us in the emotion of shame. And when we're stuck in shame, it's such a low vibration that it's hard to get out of it. And when someone disagrees with your assessment that you should experience shame around this, it helps you get out of it. So, you know, shame means I'm not worthy. I'm not enough. I don't belong. And a lot of times an external source will say something to us that make us feel that way, even though there's no truth behind it. Now, what we know about physical pain, and we've talked about this in in other podcasts, and that is that your body heals in physical time. You get cut, 
it starts the healing process. But emotional pain works very differently. It doesn't yeah, no, just start healing. There's no relationship to time. Right. Which means you can heal it instantaneously or it'll just sit there until some type of first aid is applied to it. Emotional first aid. Yep. Right. And that might be years and years and years. I mean, certainly it is years and years and years. And that is why people can be stuck in that pain mm-hmm. for years and years and years. And it doesn't heal. It just sits there and continues to, you know, affect their lives in a very negative way. So what we have said in the past is that, you know, when you get hurt physically, your body, your mind is telling you to move away from that pain. But when you get emotionally wounded, you actually need to lean into it. Most emotional wounds are caused through relationship. And they require relationship to heal it. And so if you're not in a relationship, you're probably not bumping into that pain. You're probably bumping into something different, like maybe loneliness or something like that, boredom. And it isn't until you try to really connect with your partner that you st- that those old wounds come up for healing. And a lot of those wounds happened in our childhoods. And this is the point, you know, that we grow through relationship, we heal mm-hmm. through relationship. And your partner is the one who has the uh, the serum, so to speak, <laughs> okay. to really apply some salve to that wound if they know how. But typically what we're doing is, what was your analogy with the scorpions? So, you know, this is actually part of the, the Red Sparrow series uh, trilogy. So um, <laughs> I found this to be very humorous. And they said that a metaphor for marriage is two scorpions in a brandy glass. They can't get traction, so they get face-to-face, lock pinchers, and sting each other over and over, but they're immune to their own venom. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it just sounds torturous. But but yeah, I, I think it's it's really wonderful because yeah, you know, we have said this before also in past podcasts, and that is that it is inevitable that your emotional wounds come to the surface when you are in a committed partnership. And this always comes as a surprise for people that it doesn't happen right away. Right? This is something that happens over time. And in fact, it happens when you get to a point in your relationship that it, you are safe enough right. to actually heal these wounds and to face them. And, and so it seems like things are worse, but actually things are better. And we develop over time. So when we're early on in a relationship, we're dealing with very different things. We're dealing with what I would call issues right? Who's going to cook? Who's going to wash something, whatever, you know, all those little logistical things that takes out the garbage. Yeah. You know, because you grew up one way and they grew up a different way and you're trying to figure out the logistics of your physical life. Right. And then you kind of get rolling, right? And maybe you throw some kids in there, you buy a house, career changes, and you're kind of dealing with all of that. And then Once you're in there a long time, and we're talking like a good 10 years, you know, when we're working with a couple who's been together a couple of years, we work with them for a very short period of time. They're able to resolve those issues fairly quickly. But when we have couples that are 10, 20, 25, 30 years together, now we're talking about deep healing. And we're talking about how do you show up for your partner in a way that you're not just stinging them as the scorpion? (laughs) But isn't that how we get the venom, right? Not the venom, the antidote is through the same process, right? That venom turns into antidote over time. You can, well, you create the antidote from the venom, right? Well, I guess that's what we help people learn how to do is how to do that. And it's it's a very slowed down, um, sort of interesting process. But, you know, we develop... In a way that here, I'm going to say it this way. Like when you're five years old and you go to the sandbox and some other kid hurts you in some way and you lose it. You see a five-year-old, goes, ah, right? They run to their parents. Ah. And then five minutes later, they're back in the sandbox playing with the same kid. They don't have the brain structure to ruminate and uh, 
try to make things fair and grow from that experience very much. All they want is the immediate pain to end and to go back on with things. And kids are so resilient like that. Whatever type of environment they're growing up in, they're usually pretty happy. Well, well, kids in general are just, they're emotional beings, Mm -hmm. right? All memories are kind of stored emotionally up until about age eight, you know, and as the prefrontal cortex comes online, now we have rational thought and, and now we can start to make sense of what emotions we are experiencing and why. You know, so we, we tend to be more in our head as adults than actually in our emotions. And so that's why kids, they just kind of go with the flow, right? They feel, feel something one moment and then they feel something another moment. And it, it doesn't necessarily cause as much retention as adults because we, we have apply all of this rationality to it. Right, because all pain is perception, and yes. you don't have much right. perception as a child. As a child, mm-hmm. you're just reactive because you're in that emotional brain, no relationship to time, very reactive. Right. And I mean, that's why we have pain scales, right? Because right. pain is, is very subjective. Mm-hmm. And what causes someone pain, you know, the, the same stimuli may cause more pain in one person than another. And then this really wonderful thing happens when you hit about your middle 40s. And you start going through some hormonal changes. And this is both for men and women. Mm -hmm. And a process happens that softens the amygdalas. And the amygdala is responsible for how we remember emotional things. So this is why September 11th, 2001, we all have really strong memory of that day where we were, who was around, what the weather was like, because it's stored it as a big event. Yes, an episodic memory. Right. And it's just burned in your brain. And so the the amygdala can do one of two things. It can suppress memory because it says you can't really handle it right now, or it can intensify it and you remember every little detail. So when you hit your mid-40s, your amygdala starts to go, okay, I think you're ready. Here's your memories back, or here's some of the things that you need to process now. And that's why couples who have created that safety and security with each other, who are now trying to keep their hearts open and love each other, find themselves having to do some work because there's some pain involved because we are much more not just logical and rational because our prefrontal cortex is fully operational online, but also the emotional brain has gotten to a place where it feels more comfortable in the world and therefore if stuff comes up for healing. And and this is really where that subjectivity comes into play because if you and your partner had experienced the same situation growing up, that doesn't mean that you have the same response. And so, you know, your partner might be more hurt, you know, and have more pain about something, you know, an emotional wound that they had that from your perspective, it looks kind of crazy or kind of doesn't make any sense to you, right? And you won't understand the amount of pain that your partner is going through, you know, as it's coming up for healing. And so this is really where that that depth of understanding has to develop, you know, in a relationship. Especially if you look at the difference between the masculine brain and the feminine brain right which we've talked about there is Mm -hmm. a actual physical difference yep right that that men use one hemisphere of the brain you know and have to switch whereas women are actually able to use both hemispheres of the brain simultaneously so the way we process information and you know sensory stimuli is very different so um This guy, Brad, told me this analogy. I don't know where he heard it, but I kind of like it. The waffle brain and the spaghetti bowl. Yeah. So the masculine brain is more compartmentalized like waffles. And so it's kind of interesting when you look at the research. It says that men have uh, less sensitivity to pain. But in all of our experiences, we know that men, when they're sick become big babies that's the joke right <laughs> and it, and i think it's that like they're compartmentalizing when they feel crappy they forget everything else and they just feel crappy or they were taught to shut it down especially as boys learning football and things like that 
to shut it down and not feel, not emote and stay in this place of, you know, either just anger or I'm fine. Right, right. right. And to funnel all of our emotions through a select few, mm -hmm. right? And the, be able to compartmentalize. compartmentalize it that way. Yeah, right. And then the female brain is more like spaghetti in a bowl where there's so much more connectivity and the female brain has a lot more sensitivity to pain and that's a, a benefit to our survival because women have to pay more attention to what's going on with my baby, what's going on with my body, what's going on in the environment so that I can protect my offspring because you know we don't have the physical strength to fight off as as many predators or whatever. So we had to be preemptive. And so we feel and experience pain typically faster and more intensely. And so again, it's, this isn't gender based really. You're, you can be a man and have a feminine, more feminized brain. Absolutely. Right. Or you can be a woman and have more compartmentalized brain. It really has to do with your, um, your upbringing and, you know, even if, if culturally, right. Different cultures. Different cultures are, yeah, they, they kind of handle things differently. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe they're taught to be more compartmentalized or taught to be more aware of multiple stimuli that's happening in their surroundings, you know. And so we're just kind of trying to look at, you know, these, these overall generalizations here to kind of talk a little bit about how that difference and how those differences are going to play out in a relationship when dealing with the emotional pain that inevitably is brought up in, in, a, in a relationship together. So this is why you hear both of these statements that sound contradictory. Like attracts like <laughs> and opposites attract. Right. So the like attracts like you will always attract a partner with the same depth of wound or pain but opposite ways of dealing with it. One will be more compartmentalized and one will be more sensitive to it. And so that's where it's opposite, but it's also like attracts like, and that's what makes it so difficult because you're attracted to someone who deals with it differently because both of the ways you guys are dealing with it isn't very functional. And it's somewhere in the middle that's healthy. Well, I should say that it was functional when it happened, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, the way we deal with emotional pain or emotional stressor in the moment is to cope in whatever way possible to be able to push through and get through that immediate stressor. But over time, as you develop, as you grow, as you become much more you know, in tune with who you are as a person that's when that pain comes back up again for you to process it from a very different place, right? At a very deeper level of understanding. And, and so now the way you dealt with it in the past is not going to be effective anymore. You have to evolve and create a new way of processing this pain so that you can move into that next level in your relationship. And your partner is the person to actually help you do that. Which is what we teach in Couple to Couple. Right. That's the process of how do you take, uh, be very instrumental in helping your partner not just heal their emotional wounds, but grow through them, strengthen your bond, and really create a much safer, more unified place in the world. Which is, you know, to get through <laughs> a lifetime of pain, is, to get there is pretty incredible. You know, the other thing that happens is some people don't really go through these processes. Some people... Uh, they are, they have such great coping skills that they don't really feel the pain and they probably never re will really get to it. And th those kind of people, they're kind of stuck in their left brain in the book, the new feminine brain. She says that they put a tourniquet on their corpus callosum. So they never go into the other side where there's problems and the left side of the brain governs happiness and joy and love. So they really do have rose colored glasses on. And it's not that they haven't experienced pain. It's just that is their wheelhouse of coping with it. And some couples are like that and they don't get to this depth of place with their pain. No, I mean, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've come across couples where they just say, you know, oh, we're, we're good. Yeah, there's there's nothing wrong. And, and we're not saying that, you know, having this pain come up for healing means that there's something wrong. Okay. It means that you are being faced with or have the opportunity of really getting to that next level in your relationship, 
you know, and so this is actually a very normal process, you know, and for those that kind of, I guess, level out, Mm -hmm. right? I I guess that's a really good way of saying it. You know, they get to a point that they're just, you know, I'm good, you know, going off and vacationing with the guys and, you know, she vacations with the girls and, you know, maybe we get together with friends for dinner and stuff and that's, that's okay. That's their life. Their lives are compartmentalized like their brains. Right, Mm -hmm. right. You know, and they and, don't bump into and they don't, this stuff. Yeah, they don't bump into any of, you know, the past history or past wounds that come up. And and when we're talking about past wounds, we're talking about stuff that had um, had accumulated prior to even meeting your partner. Right. You know, th- this is like really old childhood stuff, you know, that does come up for people no matter how, how good your childhood was. Mm-hmm. You know, the, there's, we go through life, we don't go through life without bumps and bruises and, and fall down and get, you know, cut and scratched. I mean, that's just part of life. And mm-hmm. so, you know, there are times that we don't process that until later on in, in adulthood. So this is also why we teach things like meditation and other uh, techniques, hypnosis, mindfulness, energy healing, because all of this type of healing is on all levels. It's physical, it's emotional, it's mental, it's spiritual, and you can get stuck somewhere. And so what we found is that working very holistically really helps people dive into themselves and find a new pathway and a new way out that really didn't exist before. And that's why we do the Tuesday night classes. Yeah. I would say it's it's actually necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you, you can't just read a book and, you know, go to a whiteboard and, and attack this analytically. It just doesn't work that way. No. You know, we are, we're, we're more than just our words. We're more than intellectually understanding life. You know, we are spiritual beings. And so we have to delve into who we are within and understand our intuition and, you know, just the, the way we move through life and how we connect with everyone on this planet. If we don't understand that, you know, our true purpose and meaning, then we can't truly heal, you know, that pain that we carry around with us inevitably. And the strongest part of that is taking as much responsibility as possible. So I want to give this little analogy that you're driving down the street, you start texting, you go up on the sidewalk, You run someone over and break their leg. That is 100% your fault. That person was completely innocent. But if that person says to you, you wear the cast and you go to physical therapy, you could, it's just not going to heal their leg. And the way we're designed as human beings is to take responsibility for whatever life has dealt us. Whether it's fair or not fair is really irrelevant when we're talking about healing and growing this stuff. Right. I, I mean, it is clearly not your fault mm-hmm. that you were hurt by somebody, but it is your responsibility to heal yourself. Yep. What because, are you, you going to do with that? Right. Because mm-hmm. people cannot heal you. And, you know, what we've talked about in relationships or a committed partnership is that your partner can help you, can help you heal, but you ultimately are the one that has to do the healing. Right. And if you're working really in a wonderful connected way with your partner, you're healing at the same time, the same pace, the same level, maybe a little leapfrog. But if one of you heals and the other one doesn't, that's going to have a tremendous amount of stress in the relationship and can actually cause it to break. Right. Right. And so if you're out here and you're listening to this stuff, do your best to share it with your partner. Hopefully they will join you in the journey because you, you attracted them into your life for this reason. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful setup. I don't know. It's so cool that we are designed to connect with another human being, to not go through life so much alone and to learn how to heal ourselves. It's beautiful. You know, I'm, I'm writing a, uh, a piece for life hack right now. And one of the things they want to talk about is, you know, some of the things that loving couples do. And, you know, some of the thoughts that are going through my mind and putting this piece together is that, what is true for relationships today is was not true 25 years ago, 50 years ago. And couples are charged with evolving and adapting to these new stressors that generations ago they never had to even 
contemplate or fathom, right? Roles were very static in the past, and now the roles are so much more dynamic and, you know, evolving at a very, very fast pace that couples need to understand these new stressors and be able to deal with, you know, these changes that are happening now. And one of the changes and one of the necessary things that couples have to face here is being able to process these these painful events that they have experienced in their life and learn how to help each other do that so that you can evolve into this next place in your relationship to be able to, you know, kind of help your kids, you know, deal with these new stressors in, in our world. And now more than ever, that I don't want to say burden, that onus is on your primary relationship. We don't have so much community and right. friends and extended family that are so involved and so helpful. It is really a lot of a lot of families that are very nuclear. And so you're getting a lot of your needs met in a very small place. Mm-hmm. And, you know, historically when people were following roles, they also had much more community so if they were bothered by something, they may not go to their partner. But now we do. And so this is just part of our evolutionary journey, which, again, I think is pretty beautiful. It definitely is. We want to thank you so much for joining us today and for listening to Couple Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. And we'd love to see you in the Couple Synergy community on Facebook or Connections, which you can also access through our Facebook page or our website, couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. For all of you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as the Couples Weekend Intensive, our premier program called Couple to Couple or Connections, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez. Mm-hmm.